What a Day It Was at School by Jack Perlutsky. My backpack weighs a thousand pounds. My backpack weighs a thousand pounds. It's fatter than a cow. I don't know how I carry it, but do it anyhow. It's filled with books and papers that my teacher says I need. She never lets me lighten it, no matter how I plead. Sometimes it tips me backward. It's a wonder I don't fall. Sometimes I have to stop and rest and lean against the wall. I tell you, from experience, it's not a lot of fun. When you have to lug a backpack, that's about half a ton. I tried to do my homework. I tried to do my homework and I finished late last night. It was our science project, but I couldn't get it right. I made a little creature out of seven kinds of slime, plus pudding and pastrami and a lemon and a lime. The thing began to wiggle in a creepy sort of way. I sensed that my experiment was going far astray. It started making noises that I didn't understand. This was truly unexpected, not at all what I had planned. It warbled and it whistled and unleashed an awful roar, then bobbed up and down a bit and oozed across the floor. Then suddenly that thing I'd made went totally berserk. My science homework ate my dog. I guess it needs more work. We're shaking maracas. We're shaking maracas and beating on drums. We're tapping on tables with fingers and thumbs. We jingle our bells and we play tambourines. We rattle our bottles of buttons and beans. We're blowing our whistles and tooting kazoos. We're clanging our cymbals as loud as we choose. We stomp up and down on the floor with our feet. We love making music. The sound is so sweet. We had a field trip yesterday. We had a field trip yesterday, an annual event. This year was really special. We're all happy that we went. We visited a factory to watch candy being made and saw a million lollipops on colorful parade. We saw a vat of chocolate that they'd warmed so it would melt and endless rows of gumdrops on a great conveyor belt. They gave us lots of samples. We giggled, roared, and squealed. Our field trip was exciting, though we never saw a field. I wish I'd studied harder. I wish I'd studied harder for our spelling test today. I'm sorry that I didn't. Now I'm feeling some dismay. I like to get a passing grade, but I don't believe I will. I think I got Wyoming wrong and China and Brazil. Though I don't want to make mistakes, I make them all the same. It's no one else's fault but mine. I have to take the blame. I tried to spell Connecticut, but really, I just guessed. If I had studied harder, then I might have passed this test. A classmate named Tim. A classmate named Tim is my partner in gym. It's clear that I'm no competition for him. We try shooting baskets. He scores a whole lot. While I hardly ever sink even one shot. He's super at sit-ups and climbing a rope. I'm useless at both and I haven't much hope. But he never brags that he's better in gym. And so I enjoy being partners with Tim. I made a noise this morning. I made a noise this morning that I didn't mean to make. It was truly an accident, an error, a mistake. I don't know how it happened, but it suddenly was there, filled with great reverberations that resounded in the air. It made a strong impression on the people in the room. A lot of them reacted like they'd heard a sonic boom. They looked at one another as if asking, was it you? 
They were laughing. They were pointing. I behaved the same way too. I couldn't keep from joking with the other girls and boys and never once admitted it was I who made that noise. Though I'm sorry that I made it from the bottom of my heart, in a way, my brief eruption was a little work of art. It's library time. It's library time and I read to myself a book about knights that I found on a shelf. I start to imagine the more that I read that I am a knight on a powerful steed. I conquer a dragon to show I am brave, then vanquish a troll in its dingy dark cave. I ride through the land doing deed after deed, for we have a library where I can read. In the cafeteria. I was feeling sort of silly, so I took a bit of bread and directed it precisely at my buddy Benny's head. Who did that? Benny shouted as he shot out of his seat, flinging carrots at Carletta, who threw her peas at Pete. Pete took a small tomato wedge and hurled it at Denise, who responded, catapulting macaroni at Felice. Felice, whose aim is perfect, started pelting me with beans. I believe that I am learning what the food chain really means. I know how to add. I know how to add. I subtract pretty well. I multiply and I divide. But I cannot seem to do fractions at all. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. Will I ever solve 12 elevenths times 9? or 17 sevenths times three? These fractions are pains that my brain can't contain. They're clearly a mystery to me. Are 44 fifths minus five and a third as much as 15 over two? And how do I add six sixteenths to a sixth? I truly don't know what to do. My teacher says fractions will soon become clear. In fact, he does not have a doubt. He's usually right, so I'll keep working hard and maybe I'll figure them out. A man named Mr. Hoobiebatch. A man named Mr. Hoobiebatch is in our school today, and we all get to listen to the things he has to say. He's giving recitations from his stories in the gym. He's written many children's books. We've never heard of him. He's big and round and jolly, and he's lots and lots of fun. He's telling silly anecdotes. We laugh at every one. In fact, we've not stopped laughing from the moment he began. We're glad he came to visit. He's a very funny man. I'm off to the infirmary. I'm off to the infirmary. I've got to see the nurse. I have a burning fever and could not be feeling worse. My head is splitting open. There's a ringing in my ears. My stomach won't stop aching. I am practically in tears. My nose has started bleeding and I'm getting dizzy too. There is no doubt about it. I have caught the Martian flu. I'm breaking out in blotches and I've got an awful chill. If I had done my homework, I might not be quite so ill. I'm learning our history. I'm learning our history. There's so much to know. A lot of it happened a long time ago. I learned how explorers arrived on our shore. I learn of our leaders in peace and in war. I learn of inventors and scientists as well, of trips to the moon and the Liberty Bell. There's one thing I'm learning that makes me think, wow, we're all a part of history. It's happening now. I drew a yellow unicorn. I drew a yellow unicorn complete with polka dots, a seven-legged elephant, a pig with purple spots. The sky was full of fury fish all flying upside down. An octopus was dressed in plaid. A camel wore a crown. I drew a green rhinoceros that floated on the breeze. Some bees as bi big as basketballs and blue spaghetti trees. The penguins wore pajamas, and a carrot flew a kite. My teacher says it's beautiful. I think my teacher's right.
Show and tell. Benny brought a lizard for show and tell today. He didn't watch it closely, and the lizard got away. Carlotta stood and held a plant that blossomed in a pot. I planted it myself, she said. I like my plants a lot. Tim then showed some lightning bugs he kept inside a jar. Each one twinkled brightly like a miniature star. Felice showed off her hamsters named Penelope and Spot. These are my hamsters, said Felice. I like them both a lot. Amanda has a bird's nest that she found beneath a tree. Denise displayed her teddy bears. I counted 23. Pete brought in some rope and tied a complicated knot. It's fun to do, he told us. I like tying knots a lot. I meant to bring my yo-yos, but I guess that I forgot. I spotted Benny's lizard perched atop Carlotta's pot. I snatched it in a second, though I might have taken less. Everyone applauded me. I was a great success. Teacher's Pet No one cares for Teacher's Pet. It's really sort of sad. He's always first to raise his hand, which makes some people mad. They often call him awful names, like Weasel, Rat, and Skunk, and moan when he gets answers right. They love to see him flunk. But Teacher's Pet is pretty smart, so he is seldom wrong. He also does his very best to try and get along. Everyone pokes fun at him, and that's why I regret that I am so unfortunate, for I am Teacher's Pet. I have to write a poem for class. I have to write a poem for class, but don't think I'll succeed. I know I don't know all the words that I am going to need. I cannot quite imagine how my poem's supposed to be. I've got a sinking feeling. I'm not good at poetry. My poem must have a meter, and it also has to rhyme. It's due tomorrow morning. How I wish I had more time. I do not think that I can write a poem the way I should, but look, this is a poem right here, and it is pretty good. 